I passed the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Remote Pilot Certification Knowledge Test in one week. And let me tell you how you can do it too. So it all started about last week when I really just thought that a drone would be a good addition to my business and getting into uh, recording and taking good photos. So I bought one and then did a little bit more research and found out that you have to get a actual pilot's license to make money off it or have a commercial business with it. So, you know, I said, let's do it. So you have to take this test. It's $150. I had to travel an hour and a half. So the content there. that's on the exam is very difficult. The FAA did a really good job on trying to keep a lot of people out of the, the commercial drone business. So the test has a lot to do about airman knowledge and airspaces and really things that don't have much to do with drones, but you still have to know drone regulations and things like that. So in order to pass this test, you really do have to study a lot. And I studied a lot to pass this test in one week. Now, the really the best way to study, and I'm very much a learner via watching videos, is watch uh, Tony Northrup's video, I'll link it below. That video, watch it three, four, five, six, maybe 10 times. I watched it about 10 times. I even watched it as I was driving up to the testing center in Rochester. So <laughs> shows you that, that, that video right there really helps you out a lot. Now, other things to study, honestly, go to the FAA and look at their study guide and try and read that. It's about 80 pages long. After everything, it's about 65 pages long if you skip over all the diagrams and stuff. But look at the diagrams, they're important. So after you've read all the material and really studied a lot for this test via watching videos and reading what they have on it, the next best thing to do is honestly take the test that the FAA gives you. FAA has an actual practice test. Take this practice test and see how you do on it. There's answers online. I'll link that too on the description, the answers, and they're all explained out. See what you get. I took it. I only missed four. So that meant I was doing pretty good. Now, I'll be honest with you, going into the test, there's some different stuff than what you see on the practice test. 3DR has a great practice test too. Take that. I did that twice. And honestly, it teaches you all about that. So let's just go over that list again one more time. 3DR test, FAA test, read the uh, pilot's FAA uh, actual study guide, and read and watch Tony, Tony Northrum's video. That's important. So now it's test day and you're driving up to the test center. I'll tell you how this test actually is. Uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty relaxed there, I'll have to say. Um, you probably have to drive a little bit of distance if you don't have a testing center near you. But you get there, it's very relaxed. You're allowed to go up to the bathroom and you know grab water and coffee if you want in the middle of your test. It is timed, of course, so make sure you don't run out of time. But honestly, make sure that you get there, you're physically and mentally ready, and have your phone put in like your car or a lockbox or something because you can't have your phone or like an Apple Watch with you. That's an important aspect for the test. Now when you sit down, you're sitting down at a computer and a little testing thing, here's something that might throw you for a curveball that's kind of important to know, and that would be the fact that the book, it's, that all your figures, they're not online like the 3DR test, they're in a book. So get ready to be flipping pages and looking at a book. So that's one thing to consider. Now you're taking the test, you can mark questions and things like that, so that's important that you can mark them and go back to them. I marked like 10 of them, but in the end on the test, I only got six wrong, which is really good. Tony Northrop got actually uh, an 88 in the test, I got a 90. Pretty good for only studying for one week. And prior to this, I had no aviation knowledge, nothing. So I'm really proud of myself in that way. Uh, let's talk about the content that you're going to see on the tests. Content that you're going to see, everything that has to do with the actual Part 107 and knowing anything that has to do with drone laws like 400 feet your maximum flying height, uh, know things like, you know, if you crash your drone, what to do, and uh, if you change your address, that was one of the questions that messed me up was uh, the change of address, how long you had to uh, tell them about that change of address. So content besides that, Sectional charts, a good portion of the test is sectional charts. Just make sure you know how to read them and you'll be good. Um, METAR and TAF reports, there's about five or six questions on that. 
a lot of questions on the ADM and the uh, the PEV and all your risk of, uh, risk management and how to do antidotes for people that have bad attitudes and flying and things like that. So work on that. Other things like the miscellaneous things on the test that you're really going to need to know. Uh, I mean, it's TAF, sectional charts, part 107 material. Oh, make sure you know about the stall speed of airplanes and uh, forces that go on them. And also, the biggest part and the hardest part of the test has to do with weather and knowing how, what happens when you go higher up at altitude, knowing uh, barometric pressures and what happens to the density and what happens to your uh, drone at those, de at those higher heights. Does it perform better in dense or humid weather and things like that? Just figure those out. Figure out your unstable air and stable air and figure out which clouds relate to that and what kind of precipitation and uh, how you can see and how that relates. That's another important thing. But besides that, study those up. Do all those tests I previously mentioned and you can pass this test in a week and get right on with your drone business. If you guys have any other questions, I mean, comment below. I'll answer them and uh, help you out. It, this drone... This drone test is hard and uh, you know if you pass it you really have an upper hand because you can do it legally a lot of people do illegal drone things and that's wrong and you can get fined up to like fourteen hundred dollars for it so save your fourteen hundred dollars dish out 150 bucks for the test and you're all